Today is Friday, July 9th. Welcome to this edition of Nevada County Now. Today's episode, we're talking earthquake, heat wave, and more. Hello and welcome to Nevada County Now. I'm your host, Cole Pettit. Did you feel the earthquake yesterday? I know I did. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, it was a 6.0 earthquake in Antelope Valley, California, 32 kilometers south-southwest of Smith Valley, Nevada. It was then followed by numerous aftershocks. According to Cal OES, there were no preliminary reports of damage or injuries. However, Caltrans was forced to detour traffic on US-395 as maintenance crews worked to remove fallen rocks. US-395 is now open from Bridgeport to the Nevada state line. And if you did feel the earthquake, please visit the link on our screen, which we'll also post in the description, to help the USGS generate their shake intensity map. And to get alerts for next time, you can download the MyShake app, available for both iPhone and Android. It's going to be very hot over the next few days. The National Weather Service in Sacramento has issued an excessive heat warning, which began today at noon and will last until 9 p.m. Monday. They are calling this heat wave particularly dangerous due to its combination of, quote, extreme afternoon highs, oppressive overnight lows, and very high heat risk. There is potential that we may even see some all-time record highs reached throughout the region. In response to the heat, Cal ISO has issued a flex alert in effect today from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. They strongly encourage consumers to set thermostats to 78 degrees or higher, if your health permits, avoid using major appliances like dishwashers, clothes washers, and dryers, and turn off all unnecessary lights. Consumers are also encouraged to use fans for cooling and unplug unused electrical items. Here are some tips for staying safe in the heat, a COVID update, as well as additional news from the county. Here's Taylor Wolf, Public Information Officer for the County of Nevada. Happy Friday, everyone. For today's Nevada County update, I'll be going over heat tips and cooling centers to beat the heat this weekend, the latest on COVID and vaccinations, a donation drive for backpacks and school supplies for students in need, and week five of the library's summer learning program this week exploring Australia. It's going to be hot this weekend with high temperatures and humidity. National Weather Service Sacramento has issued an excessive heat warning for our area through Monday evening. Please remember to stay hydrated, avoid strenuous activities during the heat of the day, and check on your neighbors who might be more vulnerable to the heat. Never leave pets or children in your hot car and be aware when walking your animals that the pavement can be over 50 degrees hotter than the outdoor temperature. Residents can beat the heat this weekend at our two cooling centers from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday and Sunday at the Grass Valley Library and Pin Valley Library. The cooling centers will provide air conditioning, water, and snacks. Well-behaved pets on a leash will be allowed, and both locations are ADA accessible. Library desk services will not be available during the cooling center hours, but residents can access the Wi-Fi and look at the materials while using the space. Before entering, staff will conduct a COVID-19 screening and masks will be required at all times under current California Department of Public Health guidance. Over the weekend, county staff will continue to monitor the weather predictions and assess if additional cooling center days are needed. Please call 211 Connecting Point at 1-833-DIAL-211 if you need to connect with information or services. COVID transmission rates continue to stay relatively low, although we did see a jump of 27 new cases in a single day this Wednesday. Although this is an alarming jump, it includes cases throughout the holiday weekend and averages to a similar daily average case rate that we've seen in Nevada County recently. However, last week Nevada County Public Health received notification of six confirmed cases of the Delta variant in Nevada County, which is more transmissible than the original virus. Vaccines are highly effective against all known COVID variants and are widely available in Nevada County through myturn.ca.gov. According to current CDC data, Nevada County is still sitting at a little more than half of our population fully or partially vaccinated. 
Due to the slowing demand for the vaccine, our hours at the Whispering Pines Clinic are slowing down next week and will be open Tuesday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The following two weeks in July, Whispering Pines will shift to two days a week. MyTurn.ca.gov continues to be the one-stop shop to find the nearest walk-in vaccine clinic near you, to make a vaccine appointment, or to request an in-home vaccination or transportation assistance to your vaccine appointment. Our Nevada County Reach team will also work with local businesses to vaccinate their staff, which can be requested through a simple online form at mynevadacounty.com slash bizvax. Child Support Services is partnering with Partners Family Resource Centers to host a backpack and school supplies donation drive for students in need. Collection bins will be available at the Eric Rood Center in Nevada City, Save Mart, Staples, and Kmart in Grass Valley, and CVS off Combi in South County. Child Support Services will also be hosting a donation drive at the Eric Rood Center from 8 a.m. till noon next week on Thursday, July 15th and Saturday, July 17th. For our final update, the library's summer learning program continues into its fifth week next week. There is still time to participate and win prizes in our summer learning program. Next week, the program explores Australia with more themed adventure bags and programming. Learn more at mynevadacounty.com slash library. That's it for my Nevada County update this week. Find all this information and more by subscribing to our weekly newsletter at mynevadacounty.com slash Nevada County News. Stay safe and cool throughout the weekend. Thanks, Taylor. As Taylor touched on, we've seen an increase of 41 COVID-19 cases since last week, a slight increase from our last few weeks. Our total now sits at 5,008 confirmed cases, 70 cases are currently active with 7 hospitalizations, and the death toll remains at 75. With the heat we've been experiencing recently, it can be difficult to get outside and stay active. There's not much time in the morning before the heat sets in, which makes close, easily accessible trails all the more important. Here to tell us more about one such trail is Felicia Dunn, Community Engagement Manager for Barryable Land Trust, sharing details on the recently improved Lytton Trail. Hello, I'm Felicia Dunn, the Community Engagement Manager for Barryable Land Trust. For those of you who aren't familiar with our organization, BYLT is a local nonprofit dedicated to protecting and defending the natural and working lands of the Bear and Yuba River watersheds and empowering healthy, resilient communities through nature access and education. I am so excited to be here in the studio today with NC Media. Today, I want to share an exciting project we recently completed. For those of you who are avid trail users in our area, you might know that BYLT builds and maintains over 45 miles of trails in Nevada and Yuba counties. One of these trails is the Lytton Trail, located in the heart of Grass Valley. The Lytton Trail is within BYLT's urban core strategic focus area. Our goals within this strategic focus area are to increase trail easements to protect and connect public access to trails and open space and to encourage outdoor recreation opportunities. When we look at new and existing trail projects, we focus on how these trails connect to one another. While smaller neighborhood trails do provide access to nature and recreational benefits, our ultimate goal is to connect all of our trails into a vast multi-use network. Creating this trail network takes many years, but every new trail project lends itself to connecting more residential communities to places of work, schools, and other trails. The Lytton Trail is the perfect example of a connected trail. Located off of Hughes Road and Sierra College Drive, the Lytton Trail was the first ma major trail project completed by BYLT, then known as the Nevada County Land Trust. For almost 20 years, the trail has been utilized and loved by our community. Since the trail was first completed, we have had the opportunity to build new community trails around the Lytton Trail, which provide increased access and a decreased reliance on motorized transportation. The Lytton Trail is uniquely positioned around Sierra College and Nevada Union High School and serves to connect the neighborhoods along Ridge Road to Hughes Road and downtown Grass Valley. 
Not only does the Lytton Trail connect schools, businesses, and residential areas, it also acts as a fuel break in an urban area and provides a corridor for wildlife. Since its creation, the paved section between Hughes Road and Sierra College Drive has deteriorated over the years. The uplifted pavement led to certain areas being difficult to navigate and the hazards were a barrier to those who relied on a smooth surface for recreation. So in 2019, fundraising began for the Lytton Trail repaving project. Over the next two years, we were able to raise the $70,000 needed to complete the project. This support came from individual and commercial donations and city contributions. Grass Valley Assistant City Engineer Bjorn Jones said the city paid for half of the project's original estimate with funds from Measure E in part because 1,500 feet of the trail is publicly owned. Alongside the city, the businesses surrounding the Lytton Trail were instrumental in funding this project. When the initial bid was increased by $15,000, neighboring businesses stepped up to fill the gap. Additionally, Briar Patch Food Co-op raised about $2,000 for the project when they donated $2 for every vote in their board member election. We couldn't have completed this ambitious project without the support of our city and our community members, so thank you for making this project possible. Along with repaving, additional trail improvement projects include installing new signage along the trail, so be on the lookout for our new Lytton Trail icon. We also installed a brand new kiosk, the funds for which were generously donated by the MEB2 Foundation, which hosts the annual turkey trot along the trail every year on Thanksgiving. Trailheads for the 2.5 mile Lytton Trail can be found alongside Sierra College Drive, which offers plenty of street parking. Acceptable uses for this trail include hiking, biking, dogs on leash, but no motorized vehicles. Additionally, the half mile section between Hughes Road and Sierra College Drive is paved and wheelchair accessible. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how trails connect communities, and I hope that you are as excited as I am about this newly completed trail project. If you snap any photos of your hike along the newly repaved Lytton Trail, be sure to share them with us on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you so much to NC Media for hosting me during their show. If you would like to learn more about BYLT, you can visit us at www.bylt.org or call us at 530-272-5994. Again, I'm Felicia Dunn, and together we can protect our open spaces and wild places. Thanks, Felicia. And if you're thinking about getting out of town to escape the heat, be advised that fire restrictions are in effect for the Tahoe National Forest. This means that building, maintaining, attending, or using a fire, campfire, or stove fire is prohibited unless it's within the charcoal grills or fire rings provided in the developed recreation sites. Smoking is also prohibited except within an enclosed vehicle or building within a developed recreation site or while stopped in an area at least three feet in diameter that is barren or cleared of all flammable material and operating an internal combustion engine off paved, gravel, or dirt National Forest System roads and trails is prohibited, except within the Prosser Pits developed off-highway vehicle area and boats on a water surface. A violation of these prohibitions is punishable by a fine of up to $5,000 for an individual, or $10,000 for an organization, or imprisonment of up to six months, or both. If you're feeling like sticking closer to home and don't mind braving the heat, the second Saturday Art Walk is taking place tomorrow in downtown Grass Valley from 11 to 3 p.m. The event features all the art in galleries and tasting rooms, public art, live music and performances, as well as artists doing demonstration and vending on the street. The artists in person will be Hammered and Wrapped, Shelby Vi, Real Graphic Design Source, Earthbound Gems, and Bill Wilson, with music from DJ Jamal and Max and Pepper. As a reminder, if you get a little too hot, the Grass Valley Library is open 11 to 7 p.m. If you haven't been able to make it out to any of the events in the new downtown area, consider checking it out. Whether it's the Art Walk or Thursday Night Market or another event, it's a nice community experience and it's wonderful to see all the smiling, happy faces again. We'll leave you this evening with some footage from last night's Thursday Night Market. And remember, stay safe, take care of each other. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.